Welcome to the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast with Roz Gervais and Laura Day, where we chat about our creative lives as artists while keeping it real and a little bit messy. We're here to inspire creatives just like you to push past those boundaries and make art that you love. Let's dive in. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Paint, Rest, Repeat. Today, we have the fabulous Sandra Gale here, and we are going to be chatting about how to avoid burnout in your art business. Hello, Sandra. Hey, Roz. How are you doing? Oh, so good. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. (laughs) Did I just ask you twice? How are you, Laura? (laughs) I'm great. Thank you. How are you going, Sandra? (laughs) I'm really good, Laura. (laughs) It's great to be chatting with you. Social norms, hey, on repeat. (laughs) Cycle that. Cycle. Oh, this is so good. Um, I'm so pleased to connect with you virtually. Um, and we were just talking off camera just before um, about the exciting space that you're in and what you're setting up for um, in, um, I think you've got an exhibition until November. I sure do. Yeah. So um, I'm as part of the Sala Festival in Adelaide, I've got an exhibition that I'm bumping in for at the moment. And um, yeah, it opens tomorrow night. So um, that will, so Sala Festival in Adelaide um, in South Australia runs from um, through the month of August. And so there's the the whole state becomes opened up and artists and different businesses connect and create um, gallery spaces in unconventional spaces. So people, it creates a way for art to become really, really accessible that you can walk into like I'm here at the blowout style and bar and which is a, a hairstyling bar. And um, so, you know, anybody who comes in here to get their hair and makeup done is going to be seeing my work on display. Um, other spaces are in supermarkets, in bars, restaurants, wineries, all sorts of different venues. And then of course, in the traditional galleries as well, they also participate. And so, and then it all kind of gets promoted underneath the Sala umbrella and there's a catalog for the event and, it's um is a really cool cool thing I think that that happens here in South Australia. Yeah, Adelaide in particular is amazing on supporting the arts. I feel I feel like it's almost a state like the best state I think in Australia in that sense. I might be wrong. They're just the vibes I get. So Sandra, just checking, how long is your work on display? Is it until the end of August? So my work um so with the the venue owner here we've chatted mm-hmm. and I'm actually going to have my work on display until November here but okay so it's so it's there's kind of that that weird weird thing where the Sala event itself runs through August but mm-hmm. yeah I'm actually gonna um oh, end of November um yeah. sometime in November we haven't sometime. actually we haven't actually set a, an actual time to, to to finish up okay I'm asking just because this episode comes out on the 28th of August. So I'm just wondering mm-hmm. if our Adelaideans who are listening, Radeladians, sorry, um, <laughs> may be able to go and check out your work. Um, now, on the topic of your work, though, Sandra, do you want to just backpedal a little bit and tell people a bit about who you are and your art practice? You know, what sort of art do you make? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I create uh, colourful portraits and I've started doing some still lifes as well, lots of big flowers, big florals and bold quirky women. Um, I do do men as well, but mainly mainly I'm all about celebrating uh, and women. And I use a mixture of um, collage using um, painted paper that I paint big sheets of paper, cut it up and glue it back together. And, um, yeah, it's kind of a stylized, naive kind of style perhaps. Um, and, yeah, really bold, quirky in celebration of um of the fabulous women that we all know so all my people are kind of quirky a little bit a little bit odd and just rock and life in their own way 
Uh, Sandra, I love how vibrant your work is. And actually, I connected with you through Roz. And when I first was looking at your work, and because it's through a computer screen, I actually thought they were paintings. Like I didn't connect that it was um, collage and cut out. And I just love that element um, as part of your work. And it must be so fun, like to be in the process of like cutting. Like I, I feel like that would be quite therapeutic to be painting your paper and, um, you know, creating the cutouts and all of that sort of stuff. It is, it is really, really fun. And I've actually started doing, actually pushing with this collection that I've just launching, um, I'm actually pushing more in into that more mixed, a mixture of painted elements and then cut out elements as well. So, um which has been fun to kind of mix that up and get more texture and try and get some grungier elements into it as well. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure whether the cutting is actually a freeing process because it's quite particular because there's not a lot of room for error. Like when you're cutting out, you know, eyes or eyelashes, like, yeah, the cutting is quite stressful because if you make a mistake, you suddenly go from like really lovely looking eyes to kind of <laughs> <laughs> creepy eyes. I love it. Right. I it Sandra, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like, so yeah, it's actually a really strategic, quite planned. So mm -hmm. yeah, when I am, yeah, doing it, it's, it is very, very planned. And so I've been kind of looking at ways that I can kind of loosen up and make it a bit, a actually a bit funner of a more yeah freer process yeah so your work is quite stylized is that do you have a graphic design background or anything like that <laughs> yeah I do yeah illustration yeah illustration mm. so yeah. which again is is where I'm kind of trying to really push myself to move push past that um having my work looking so illustrative and to kind of free it up and get looser and, and get um yeah a little bit grungier and, and not be quite so perfect. So I think that's, uh, yeah, I think. And so in that kind of cutting and pasting, it comes from that I spent a lot of time doing like illustration using like cutting and pasting in Photoshop. And so I've taken, I've kind of done, taken digital illustration and then moved it into traditional media. But, um, you know, which, which in itself has, you know, allowed for a lot of imperfection because like I was saying, like when you cut something, if you make a mistake cutting, you can't, you know, undo, there's no control Z. <laughs> Don't you wish there was sometimes? Right. I have <laughs> totally <laughs> visualised that, you know, like cooking something for dinner and like, oh, no, it where's that button? Like, <laughs> undo, undo, undo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, One so day. I reckon that's the next technology to, um, to undo in life. <laughs> chat GPT, number one, and the next one. <laughs> You control Z your life. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so I studied, yeah, I studied visual communication and I specialized in illustration. And so that was, and then I'd worked. So um, I studied mature age. So I went back to study, which I say mature age now, it sounds like it, like in that distance of time, I was still a baby, but I was, I was mature age when I was, I was 28 when I went back to uni, which now sounds so young, but mm -hmm. um, at the time I was so much older than everybody else that I was studying with. Um, and so, yeah, so I did that. And then after I finished studying, I worked, um, as an in-house illustrator for a, a gift, a gift company. Um, and I did that for 14 years. So, um, doing illustration and graphic design for them. So yeah, that's where I do have that, that background that. Okay. Yeah. So now it's making sense. So like looking at like your website and all the thing, lovely things that you offer, Coming from that gift background, I can see how you've translated that into your art business. I mean, you sell your original art and your fine art prints and things like that, but then you also got candles and fashion and greeting cards and all of those different product lines that you've explored through your business. So can you tell me when you made that switch? Like how many years ago was that and what did it look like from so going from full-time work to into your art business? Yeah, so I was part of the um, the COVID Great Resignation. So I um, had that that period, you know, during, you know, 2020, 2021, when we all had more time on our hands. And um, and so I went from, it was also for me a period of, in, in my life, personal life, it was a period of change as my daughter was, 
um, moving into year 11 and year 12, she got her driver's license. I suddenly wasn't needed as mum's taxi anymore. And um, even, and then wasn't needed for homework supervision. Like she, she had it under control. So I wasn't needed for, for that kind of hands-on role quite so much. And so, and then, you know, like COVID meant no socializing, even though, you know, we had a very different COVID experience in South Australia than other places did, but still it was a lot less going on. And so I just had time to play. And, um, and so I, took that time to kind of just go, oh, what kind of art do I want to make when I'm not creating for work? Like, what does that look like? What kind of, what's my style? What do I even like doing? And so I took that kind of time and was doing all of this exploration and trying different things and experimenting. And I did a bunch of different courses and tried, you know, learned a whole heap of different things. And um, yeah, then I, um, it started from the t-shirts that I'd had, um, I'd shared shared on Instagram the love is all you need kind of hand calligraphy message and um, a bunch of people commented, oh, I want this on a T-shirt, I want this on a T-shirt. And I was like, oh, my God, nobody's actually ever really cared that much about what I do. I'm like, oh, figure I need to figure out how to put on a T-shirt. So I Googled that and, and it kind of all started from there. And then I got that one T-shirt in and, um, and, and, sent that out and um and then I had some extras ordered and um so my sister had suggested oh why don't you go to like Gilly's market one of the markets here in Adelaide and um and sell them there and I was like oh but you know t-shirts that's not really enough on its own is it like I probably need something else and um and so I had a friend who was making candles and we'd chatted about me doing some art to put on her candles but then um for different reasons that fell through and, um, and so then I said, I'm like, oh, hey, how about you make candles for me and I'll put my art on your candles and sell it that way. And so um, so she was on board with that. So she was making candles. So then, and then for me, because like I said, I had this background in um, doing graphic design and illustration for a gifting company, um, for me to put my art on products was a no brainer. Like packaging design is is like, I can do that in my sleep. And so, um, so to create, you know, the bo- beautiful, colorful boxes for the candles and the, the art on the stickers and all of that, that was like, boom, done. And, um, and then, um, yeah. And then greeting cards was like a no brainer that to, to do as well. So I, I, yes, I went to Gilly's market with my candles and my greeting cards and my t-shirts and, um, yeah. And then I had a, um, a wholesale inquiry as well from sharing that on social media from um, my local gift shop. And, um, and so that then meant that I, it, I, I kind of, you know, did some reflecting on that because that kind of, for me, felt uncomfortable with, um, with my work. Um, and, and so, yeah, so I kind of had decided that um, that was time so to, sorry, what felt uncomfortable with your work? The whole uh, because piece? I would be um, because I felt like it didn't feel like the right thing to do because I would be then in competition with my employer. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. so the second this wholesale opportunity appeared, that's when you had to question what you were doing with your job, job, and with your mm-hmm. art hustle yeah and blah, blah, blah. okay I'm yeah, totally following yeah that, fair enough sorry I didn't explain yeah. that really no yeah. that's okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, so, and then that's when basically you know gave gave notice and yeah off you went with the so, art biz so that was that whole thing of like so I really um leapt well before I was ready because I in in terms of you know where you kind of like you know in all of those business things they talk about proof of concept and all of those sort of things like I'd sold you know one one design, you know, one collection of t-shirts. I'd done one market and, and, and went, you know what, I'm going to give this a go and, and, and see, see what happens. So it was very, like that though. It was very, <laughs> very impulsive. <laughs> but brave as well. And like, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes it is sometimes like I'm not all the time, but sometimes it is that, um, that need that makes it happen you know like for for me anyway when I transitioned from my job job to art business I was like oh okay well this is it I better make it work sort of thing exactly. um yeah. 
and and it's it's worked out but you know I just think it's yeah I don't know I think that was brave of you but I know mm-hmm. you know you're in this period now of reflecting on everything right mm-hmm. yeah yeah so um yeah so I yeah I kind of like so after that I kind of just went like head first into everything. And I booked myself in, I applied for every single market that I possibly could. I booked myself in for absolutely everything going, I'm, I'm just going to make, I'm going to make this happen by sheer, sheer force of will. This is, this is going to work. And, um, and, and so, yeah, so I'd, I'd kind of just booked everything and tried everything out and, um, and yeah, and I've gotten now three. So that was October, 2021 that, that I mm-hmm. did in my resignation and um, so it's been nearly three years. Nearly now, three years, right? yeah. Right, yeah. And what a, um, what a journey, Sandra. Because right. mm, I've yeah. got you know in front of me, I've got a list of all the things you've tried in your art business. So I've got well, I know that Laura just listed some of your old products, um, but you've hit the markets really hard. And I'm talking about big markets like finders, keepers, makers, and shakers. I already know this about you, Sandra. Full disclosure, Sandra and I are friends. Um, <laughs> so I know the whole market side. Like these are big, costly, intense professional markets I suppose you call them as well you've also explored the wholesale side of things with the life and style trade fair and having wholesalers across Australia um, you've hit, you've tried workshops in person as well obviously the art on products um, and the other things that Laura listed before so you've basically tried all the things and you've just gone all guns blazing for three years and you've achieved some amazing things your art is bleeping gorgeous and I would like to buy every single one of your candles like five zillion times over (laughs) um but you've hit this you know this point and I think this is really interesting and this is what you know Sandra you've given us permission to talk about this in the episode today is you know what to do when your art business is a bit rough on your well-being um and how to sort of avoid that burnout so what's your update Sandra what's happening at the moment for you yeah so like as I as 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 you said, like I tried, I tried everything and pushed myself really, really hard and just kept on moving forward. And then amongst all of that, I've had some personal changes, which I don't really want to go into, but life has changed as well. And, um, and so, but through all of that, I kept on pushing and pushing and pushing and moving and moving and moving. And I was constantly doing and staying busy and keeping myself very busy, but I've gotten to a point now where I, like, honestly, like a couple of months ago, I was on the brink of burnout. Like I was so, so completely exhausted and, and, and just, um, like, I don't want to say that I couldn't go on because I, I did clearly, but, um, I was, I was exhausted and I just had to stop. And so I made a really, really intentional decision to give myself permission to hit pause. And I, had decided that I wasn't actually going to book myself in for any more events for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. So this event that I'm doing for Sala is the last event that that I had booked in advance when I was still in that go keep moving mentality. And and now um I've I've gone pause, stop. I need to I need to reflect and just give myself some time to to actually figure out how I want my business to look and how my business can serve me, not me serving my business because it's like my business has become, I don't want to like a machine that, that, that just takes so much of my energy and takes so much from me. And it's not, it's not rewarding me in the way that, that it it should for the amount that it takes from me. And so, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just pausing to, decide what the future looks like and and probably even for me um one of the cha- biggest challenges that I've had with doing all of the everything and pushing all of those um different revenue streams of workshops markets wholesale um product manufacturing is that I haven't had enough time to make art which is the thing that that fills my heart with happiness and was the whole point of me doing this and I'm not doing the one thing that I really wanted to be doing. So yeah, yeah that's what a what a powerful step to take a step back and listen to your body, listen to what is happening and really just step back and just think about, okay, 
how can this art business fit back in with my life so it can fulfill me and light me up and go back to all the original um, purpose behind it, which is, you know, you love the creativity. You love like being in that creative process um, and, you know, you've achieved some incredible things over those three years. I know that lots of listeners um, of this podcast would probably be looking at your business and be really quite amazed at like what you have built doing the finders keepers market, doing life in style, like that's no joke. Like those markets are, are massive and that's a huge achievement to um, be in that space. But it's um, it's good that you're, uh, you are listening to yourself and realising that that um, that hustle, that working and all of that, that, that treadmill, <laughs> it, it can um, lead to burnout. It can lead to unfulfillment in a, in a creative career. Um, so you're listening to that instinct in yourself and that's an amazing thing to do. No, oh, thanks, Laura. Yeah, it has been, and it's been, it's been tough because I am a, a busy person and I have got that, um, you know, that habit of, and, and even that kind of, you know, upbringing and background where you kind of have that, um, you know, you don't just sit around and do nothing. Like, you, you know, like, I don't know, I worked in hospitality and it was always that if there's time to lean, there's time to clean. And <laughs> so you just always, there's always something to do and you always stay busy and you don't, you never stop. And, um, and so that's been really tricky even to get over that mindset, which I don't know that I'm necessarily there. Like, I think that I'm very much in that reminding myself that it's it's okay to stop and it's okay to take a break and that's and it's not even just okay it's important like I have to I have to stop and I have to take a break because if I don't then I won't have anything left to give like I have to I have to refill and so um but yeah so maybe you know and maybe in the whole way that me kind of going I'm not booking any more events for the rest of the year is probably as dramatic as me kind of booking everything as well like I you know <laughs> I could be part of that all or nothing mentality that I don't I'm kind fully of... committed to pausing <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I love it <laughs> and so so perhaps you know perhaps another person would be more you know would do everything in a in a more balanced way where they would you know they wouldn't do everything all at the same time and then they wouldn't stop and just do nothing <laughs> like they would just do you know a little bit <laughs> you know what I can see here as well Sandra and I just I just wrote it down while my brain was focusing on it before was the um is the importance of those those sort of strategic like planning and the strategic thinking moments generally in your business like yes of course you've got to do all the things and yes creative people were always going to have all the ideas but once every quarter at, at the very least we should be sort of stepping back looking at the big picture what are we building here what are the parts of this what's you know what's working what's not working and then getting your actions to align with that strategy you know I think that might be the piece perhaps that was maybe missing for you in your I, journey I, to date. Yeah, I really think you're right with that, Roz, that it has that has been the part that's that's been missing is that I haven't had those those constant reflections that I would be keeping myself so very busy. And so so in that thing of like that kind of sense of urgency where everything seems urgent and screaming and so I would constantly be going from like one fire to the next mm -hmm. and those those things that take time and take reflection would would just get skipped because they're not screaming and they're not urgent and so they get pushed to one side and um but but you know like giving myself time to do that um and so you know and that's probably in that whole thing of like um it, it, you know would, would be in the sensible person would, you know, book a week and go, I'm just going to take a week to reflect where I'm going. I'm taking six months to reflect. Um, but, you know, like, and, and maybe, you know, maybe I'll kind of come through after, you know, October, you know, by the end of August, I, you know, after having, because like once this, once this event is set up, then it's not like a hands-on event. Like it's just, you know, I'll have the opening night tomorrow night and um and then it exists and the, and the work here on display it's a uh, funny concept but i can completely relate that you have to 
I don't know why. Laura, you're, this is your zone. You tell me. What do you think of this, this need to be able to, like, clear room in your calendar so you can think? How does that work? Why can you not think if you still have things in your calendar? I'm right there with you, Sandra. But what is the deal with that, Laura? Look, it took me getting a <laughs> chronic illness to like carve out time for myself and to put my health first. So I'm not going to say I'm perfect at figuring it all out, but my body knows. Um, and I heard, learned the hard way. <laughs> But I think, um, you know, it's a lot of deconditioning around that um, hustle culture and around that, um, like, you, mess Sandra, you're talking about that messaging and, like, um, I, like I got, um, you've got to soldier on, like, you've got to keep going. Like, it, it's those things that it's just like, well, why? Because I think that, you know, if if we are the foundation, like, if we, if us as a creative being, um, is the foundation, then like we should be honoring that part of ourselves and, you know, going back to like basics and like really building that foundation uh, first because, yeah, you can't, you can't just keep pushing and pushing and pushing it. Like there's going to be a point where it just sort of like boils over the top. Um, but also I just want to say, Sandra, you stayed in the game for three years. So that's amazing. Like you haven't packed up and given in. Um, like I just love that like I loved listening to your artist story I loved that you were just following that thread of inspiration you were following the requests of your audience you were like really digging into using the background of um, you know your um, design and product-based business to like create a business for yourself so you know you followed those threads so now it's sort of like a transition point it might feel like limbo it might feel like nothingness because you've just been so active and busy and working and out there <laughs> um doing all the markets and all the things it might feel like that limbo stage right now but but it is like I feel like this is amazing that you've given yourself this space because Ros was talking about that that strategic planning and things like that's really important to build a sustainable business so, yeah. yeah, it's an exciting space to be in if you want to do a reframe. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. And I do, I actually do feel excited about it as well, Laura, because oh. it does, it does feel exciting. It feels, it feels good. And it like, I know that I'm doing the right thing. Like I know that it's, I know it's the right thing for me. I know it's the right thing for my business and um, to just, you know, to, to take time and reflect on what, my schedule looks like to make sure that when I do scale things back up again, I'm really intentional about making sure that there's time for creating in there and that that time is prioritized and made really sacred. And it's not something that can be bumped out because of, you know, other, other random things. That's actually the most important thing that has to stay. And, um, and, and then, yeah, and I feel excited. Like, I, I feel I feel hopeful that I can get the bus my business working through the through my website, through my that e commerce to like build to to try and build that e commerce part that it can then take over what I was doing with markets. And so, I I feel hopeful that um, I can use all of the knowledge and all of the learning that I've done over the last three years to push that and, and build that um you know it's it's tricky like translating in-person energy to online energy is is hard and at, at markets I know that you know it's easy to sell in person because people connect with you as a person and they you create a connection that people feel compelled to support you um so it's it's tricky to trans translate that through a screen but hopefully I can you know keep building and making that work and so you know and and like so doing all of the things that I've done I definitely don't regret doing all of the everything because um for me to move expand my audience beyond South Australia um doing interstate markets was such a good way of of doing that so applying for those big markets like the finders keepers and makers and shakers um they have been an amazing way for me to expand and build build my audience and so I now 
have, you know, and I've got, and even to build my email subscribers that I've got, you know, I've got a really good email list now and um, from, from doing that. And so, and I get, you know, I get orders from New South Wales and Victoria and, and Queen, I mean, I haven't done any Queensland events, but I do get orders coming through from Queensland as well. Um, and so, you know, so that's really cool to know from doing, from doing all of that traveling that it was, it was definitely worth it. Like I don't, I don't regret it at all. And, um, and then even like doing, and so aside from the markets and that I did the, um, the affordable art fair as well, um, with, with, with Ross, um, (laughs) back in, yeah, in, in Sydney. And so, which was really cool as well. And that was, um, that was great to be connecting with, um, a different audience as well with collect, you know, with an art collector audience, which is different from the market audience as well. So, yeah, so it's been, so yeah, I, I think for me, like when I, I've chatted with Ross before and I've used an analogy of an old cottage that, that my, my business feels like this, this kind of old, you know, old cottage that has had like a whole bunch of additions tacked on over the years. And it's got, you know, like a dodgy seventies lean to there's an outside toilet and laundry and it's, it's a schmuzzle and it just, <laughs> um, and, and it just, and that's how my business feels at the moment that it's just kind of got everything that's been tacked on and attached. And there's, there's just not been any thought or consideration to it. And now it's time to, to bring in an architect and, um, and, and give it a slick redesign, but keeping, those foundations and keeping the core and still having that feeling of the original vintage cottage that so that it still feels like me but it's just me in a way that's a bit classier and a bit easier to live with (laughs) joyful as well you know I think there's nothing wrong with you having tried all the things sometimes you really do have to try the things in order to know if it's a good fit for you so you have that experience you well and truly have all of that experience now um and you know the future is yours I'm really glad that you're taking this time to step back really reflect um and look at your business strategically what what lights you up what serves you on the, you know, income side of things as well for business because business does equal income. That's what we're talking about um, so that you can work out how to go forward in a way that, you know, is more sustainable as well and better for your well-being. Yeah. So, and that that's the important thing is to make sure that that what I'm doing is making money because that's the point of it. And so, so to kind of like look at not just making money, but making profit mm-hmm. because, um, you know, like I've made, I've made good money, but I haven't made good profit over. So with, with doing all of these things, because, you know, like all of these, all of these big events are expensive and having a product based business is expensive as well, because you have a lot of, you have a lot of your capital tied up in stock. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so to make sure that, that in, in that restructure, that it's not just about revenue, but it's also about um, profitability as well is, and, and to so to be very intentional about where I choose to invest not just my time but also my money as well and yeah. to make sure that um that if I'm doing if I'm doing a big event to be prepared to consider that money as marketing money not necessarily as a sales investment because it, it doesn't yeah so it just thinking about thinking about those things in that way as well I think is important. Mm-hmm. And you've Sorry. got all of that um, that background, you know, so you can look back, you can look at the numbers, you can analyse, you can like tap into your intuition, you can feel like what does my heart want to do and then like marry it together when you're in that space. So it's amazing that you're in like after you set up the walls <laughs> in that space, <laughs> say goodbye to the exhibition, <laughs> take your pause. <laughs> you'll be able to go back and look at all of that history and everything that you've done and all the events that you've done. And then you'll be able to sort of sink into feeling like, okay, what's going to work for my lifestyle? And then like, what's going to like really support the business and like build those foundations and like um, form a picture of what the future is going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think it's, um, yeah, so it's exciting. It feels, it feels really, really exciting. And I'm, Yeah. And I feel like just the feeling that exhale feeling of thinking about just stopping and and taking, taking a little break feels so, so nice to even to like take a break 
before I start actually thinking about what's happening, but just to take a break, full stop and, and have like a little, a little holiday. And um, Ooh, whether it's, a leave, whether it's a leaving going somewhere holiday or if it's like just a holiday at home, but just a, a holiday from my business to, to just stop and take a moment is, um, is definitely going to be very, very nice to do and very needed, I think. <laughs> Amazing, Sandra. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. And we're really excited to hear about what is next for you. So we're going to be watching you very closely. <laughs> um, where can our listeners find out more about you and connect with you online? So um, so my Instagram is sandra.gale.studio. Gale is G-A-L-E. And my website is sandragalestudio.com. Absolutely amazing. Make sure that you give Sandra a follow so you can check out what she's up to and check out this new architecturally designed bungalow. What did you call it? Cottage. <laughs> it's going to be a fancy cottage. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> all right. We'll see you all soon. Thanks oh, for listening. Thank you. Thank you Bye, so Sandra. Bye. Bye. Bye.